so much for waiting. Uh, first, Safari browser doesn't work with the software. So Broken Arrow, in the Vietnam War, if a U.S. Army unit was overrun, they would use the radio called Broken Arrow, meaning they need help from any and all resources in the area. It could be a heavy bomber. It could be a Cessna flying over to say the enemy's coming in from the north, change direction. Anything was vital to help keep the unit alive. So for this, for the enemies inside the perimeter, this is referring to domestic abuse situation. In the past with information security, people would come to us and say, you know, I need help fixing my desktop. Can you help me connect my router, my Wi-Fi? It's moved on to, can you help me set up my Wi-Fi access at home? Now they're coming to us and saying, can you help me fix my situation? I'm divorcing my partner and they're stalking my Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn. They're still able to access my messages. What do I do? And we want to do something in information security. That's the nature of the, we want to secure the data. We want to help the user. We want to help the industry, whether it's the industrial, uh, whether it's the defense industry, industrial human resources convention, doesn't matter. We're geared to do something. We're not wired to be inactive. That's the nature of the business. You know, and going from that, if you work in information technology for DFIT, you know, digital forensics insider threat, the tools we have, if you want to monitor network traffic, the log on dates and times, the badge access, we could go through Splunk. If you want to look at email and productivity content, Office 365, you can even go to Teams and see what messages are sent one to another. Remote file access, you can log on to somebody's laptop through the force backup through Druva, look at someone's desktop, look at the file to see if it's a resignation note, see if it's something confidential being sent out, or if it's something inappropriate, or if it's a false positive. McAfee DLP, data loss prevention. We can look and see if the data is being copied and pasted to a USB drive, saved to the clipboard when it should be. These are the resources we have at work in our careers. This is what we do. But on the job, when you log on, you consent to monitoring. But at home, you don't have that consent. When our person, where they come to us, whether it's you listening who needs the help, whether it's a client, whether it's a friend, coworker, they're asking for our help. The fast resource is go to goaskrose.com, safeescape.org. That's set up from safeescape.org, sorry, from Chris Cox, who created the organization. It's an all-volunteer group to help provide domestic abuse assistance. It fits in the space between social services and law enforcement to help the person get away from the abuser. Another good resource, Smart Girls Guide to Privacy. If you want to volunteer, go to help at safeescape.org. If you need assistance, go to help at safeescape.org. Either way, you will get a response. Now, that said, those are your 30-second flyaways. So if we were doing this at DEF CON, at Dine Initiative in Las Vegas, when we can do things live again, that would be enough. If someone said, oh, you attended this talk, I need this assistance, but you have to go to a plane, you could give them this information, and that's a start to help someone get away from an abuser. Now, that said, the core of the talk, we know the information security principles, data confidentiality, data availability, data integrity. The cool little CIA acronym, right? The risk mitigation principles that we've distilled down for this, you want to control the environment, look for identity theft, and make sure you have data availability. Of those, the most important is controlling the environment. It doesn't matter the shape of the data if the person who needs help is in physical danger. That's the most important thing. Out of controlling the environment, Personal security first and foremost, data security and social leaks. It doesn't matter how well you've secured yourself in your data, if you still have friends and family posting about where you're going and what you're doing and leaking your plans and intent. I realize I'm going a little bit faster when I have to catch up. I've got 90 something slides to run through, but we'll get there and it won't seem that bad. For personal security, the most important thing is to get off the X. If you are or someone is in an abusive situation and you know it's bad, whether it's gaslighting, physical abuse, verbal abuse, financial abuse, get off the X. Get away from being a target. We had a meeting overseas that went bad. 
Station chief gathered us back together to do a debrief after action report to see what happened. And one of the case officers said, well, I thought things would get better if I just stayed. And the station chief, Mark, said no bad situation ever got better by sticking around. Whether it's a work situation, relationship, living situation, if it's bad, no one's making you stay. Leave and start over. I know there's a little bit more to it than that. But when I was briefing my company on this, the talks that I give, one of the founders of the company, Jim at Revolutionary Security, said, you never have to ask permission to leave a dangerous situation. He was discussing a uh, in his startup of the company, somebody was out with clients, the clients were drinking, and they wanted to drive, and the cl uh, consultant didn't want to call for a separate taxi because he thought he'd be questioned about having a separate expense report. Jim had this and said, you never have to ask permission to leave. If things are bad, of course we'll pay that. No one's going to fault you for taking care of yourself. Getting off the X, first and foremost, if this is you and you're going to leave the situation, have a bug out bag packed. You know, that's a little bit of a military term, but have an ID, your driver's license, birth certificate, passport, have some cash if possible, a smartphone, your charger, keys. That way, if you need to leave at a moment's notice, you could. You can always start over tomorrow. In special ops training, they say if you can just make it to the next meal, make it to the next sunrise, you've got a chance to start over. <clears throat> Taking that mentality for things are bad, I'm going to leave, I'll get a hotel for the night, I'll start over. That's usually the best situation. You want to keep your <clears throat> excuse me, electronic devices with you. <clears throat> I'm sorry. But what if there's stalkerware on the device? How do you know that this device hasn't been tampered with? You might want to consider keeping a prepaid cell phone and prepaid credit card somewhere offsite. I worked with one person who was a uh, vet. She kept her cash, prepaid credit cards, and a prepaid phone in the medicine vault in her office. It's a different charge if someone breaks into your car to steal your phone versus breaking it into a uh, medicine safe or safe in the office. The police, law enforcement are going to be a little bit more interested if they've broken into something hardened, so to say. Now, the talk is going to weave back and forth. What if they leave the situation? What if they're the ones who leave the house? And this is mainly going to be the next focus for the next couple of minutes. The abuser has left the premise and you're sitting there, ground zero, what do you do? First and foremost, you call the locksmith, you call the landlord, you call the leasing agent, whoever's responsible for your building that can change the codes. If it's you, you call the landlord, uh, locksmith. If not, you get somebody who can change the keys because if someone who's been abusing you comes back in the building, breaks in the door, that's a different response from law enforcement of they broke in their back versus they let themselves back in. You're only going to get a faster response if the door's broken in. So make sure you change those locks. Another thing to consider is changing the garage door remote access frequency, whether it's hardwired to your car, the former partner's car, or I've seen this actually in a lot of garages. It's surprising. It's like the picture here, username, admin, password, admin. The garage door open, the garage door code box will have, if you've forgotten your code, here's how to reset it right there on the door, how to reset it to open the garage door to get back in the garage door. And a lot of people leave their doors open from the garage into the house. Got to consider that uh, default password, if you will. And you're going to want to change your passwords. I want to say that more than once. Um, and as you're doing this, be persistent and thorough. I don't know if you can hear the code. It's an older code, sir. We're transmitting it. It's an older code but it checks out. And we know how this family domestic dispute between a father and his two kids ends after this. So even if it's an older code, older password, we're gonna walk through that in the time we have remaining. On a known safe machine, change your passwords and security questions. If it's a laptop, hard drive they've left behind, consider it compromised. And you don't have to tell the truth. As Americans, we're conditioned to tell the truth. 
it's okay to lie online. When you're creating a new security question, answer, fabricate, make it up, lie about your favorite location. Where did you get uh, married? Phil's Little Chapel in Las Vegas. Uh, favorite event that happened uh, when the meteor hit the earth. Uh, favorite event when I captured a unicorn. It doesn't matter what it is as long as you physically write it down so you remember it because it's something you may not remember. You're going through a traumatic event, but lie. It's okay to lie. If you can go to genealogy.com, ancestry.com, and classmates to find out the year you graduated, your mother's maiden name, the street you grew up on, and your junior high school, that's the bulk of the security questions right now. It's okay to lie about these answers. So as you're changing your password, and again, I know I'll probably get a lot of feedback in the chat, but physically write it down on a piece of paper. Don't assume your devices are secure yet. Have a new strong password, connect to your Wi-Fi router, and look at the connected devices. Take a screenshot, this is important. Here you can see that there's a Android connected, a Mac laptop, and an iPhone. Another security tip, don't name your iPhone Jane's iPhone because that highlights you on the target deck if someone's doing a wire shark on you. They would know exactly which iPhone is yours. Name it something generic. Name it PC. Name it Galaxy S8. That way you've obfuscated your target just a little bit more. But take a screenshot because we want to want to make sure everything that's connected to your wireless router is what should be there. Also remember I can't tell you how to connect to every log, router log location. Store your logs, keep your logs. That's going to be important as well. I'm an Apple guy. I love Apple. Been to Apple headquarters many times. Go to your iPhone, and this is key here, and the slides will be available. Look under settings, and then look at what devices are connected to your iPhone. Here you see one iPhone and two laptops. That's perfect, that's my account, that's what I have connected. Also look at Find My iPhone. If that's enabled, turn it off. You don't need a Blue Force tracker for the adversary to be able to track your every location. Why would they, you want the stalk, excuse me, why would you want your stalker to be able to see every move you make? Take a screenshot. If these are items that you don't recognize, take a screenshot, before, excuse me, before you uh, disable them. From there, we're going to roll over to Apple ID, share my location. We want to have that turned off. You don't need to share your location at this point. You don't need to share your music, your movies, your apps. You don't need to share anything with anyone. This is your data right now. There are numerous troops who are in Afghanistan, Iraq, different deployment zones who are taking pictures for their job. And because they had family sharing turned on, their family was seeing the pictures of what the troops were witnessing because it had family sharing. Worked with one case very quickly where the uh, partner just had family sharing set up, so he was able to get drop copies of all the messages and photos. This is another beautiful thing. People think they're hacking. They're not hacking. Stop it. It's not hacking. Go to messages, text message forwarding, and see where your messages are actually being forwarded to. Most of the cases we get with Operation Safe Escape or right here where the abuser is just simply forwarding your text messages to his phone or her phone. To be fair, go to Android, log into your Google, uh, yeah, your Google account and look at the different devices that are connected here. Where are you getting drop copies? Take a screenshot if you don't recognize them. Go to Google Takeout. Again, I've got to start truncating for, to make up a little bit of time. Google Takeout records everything you've ever done with your Google account. It's painful. I don't recommend looking back at what you texted somebody back in 2006. It's horrible. I would love to delete it. You can't. This is every bit of data associated with your phone. The good side is if they've sent you abusive texts, messages, photos, doesn't matter. It's recoverable through Google Takeout. The bad side is if they have access to your Gmail account and can get access to this, they can have the data. Once it's gone, it's gone. So lock it down and remember this, that you may have more evidence to help support your case to get them out of your life for good through the Google takeout. Apple also has this. It's a newer step. I feel very good, knock on wood right now, saying this is very secure. Multiple steps to validate you are who you are. It's a seven-day waiting period to download this. 
And then it's, again, multiple steps to download it. You can see what's recorded there. Magna Axiom has some great parsing tools for this. Uh, you can go through. It's all your Apple account data, logons, GPS data, IP address that data. Stuff an investigator would be able to prove that when you logged into your account, you're not at your IP. You're at the abuser's residence, and they're still logging into your account. And this can't be erased from the Apple servers. That's beautiful. This is what a consumer can get. Apple also has law enforcement level warrants that can be uh, provided to get this as well. But this data is still there. Going on to everybody's Facebook. I'm not on Facebook. I just don't have anything interesting to say. <laughs> um, horrible for a speaker to say that. But go to account settings. Over to uh, accounts hitting security. Look for your active sessions. If there's a setting there you don't recognize, take a screenshot. If your session is being cl uh, cloned onto someone else's system, take a screenshot, document it, then log them out. You're going to want to start logging all this documentation. The holy of the holy is like, this isn't a how to hack somebody. This is, here's the data that's available. Here's the data that's at risk. Make sure you secure this. The U.S. telecom providers, one or two will keep three days worth of text messages, the uh, verbose details of who said what back and forth, three days. After that, it's just metadata of A text and B. What was in there? We don't know. Facebook Messenger will record here in uh, this tweet. I don't have to read it to you. And it stores at least a year worth of data for every phone call, how long it was made, who you talked to, every text with granular details made for a year. If you need evidence as to what was said, you got it. You also have to secure this so that they don't get access to it to erase it, alter it. So it's good that it's there. It's bad that it's there. It is what it is, as they say, make sure you have this locked down. Rolling over to the Apple laptop, again, I'm an Apple guy. If you just type in Keychain, we can see here back when we had real conferences in the real world, go to Infuse 2017, highlight the name of the network. This is just proof of concept. Type that in, type in the username and password. Now, Infuse 2017 is going to give you the clear text password. Their software, their password was guidance. Principle applies that your password, if it was saved on a Mac that was left behind, I can get your password this way. The adversary can get your password. Definitely not saying get someone else's password. That's illegal. That's go to jail material. Don't do that. But know that this is how a lot of people lose their passwords to the adversaries because of that shared keychain. So when I keep saying be persistent and thorough changing your passwords, this is why. Sorry about that. The media that's left behind, if you leave a USB drive behind, the data can be uh, recovered. I love Disk Drill. A uh, little company out of Atlanta, it's about a $60 program if you pay for it. This US, this is a message from a USB drive that a PI gave me, working a case with them freelance. I ran Disk Drill to see how good their security was. I recovered a text message on a USB drive, which is a screenshot of someone saying, make sure you delete your messages, and they do. This is a recovered text message of a recovered JPEG off a USB drive. If somebody like me can do it with $60 in TK, South Carolina, someone who's more technical can absolutely do this. Be careful with what you leave behind. Conversely, if they leave this behind, you might be able to recover data that can help bolster your case. A neighbor, why has he got a picture of a TV on there? A neighbor bought a 65-inch TV off of Facebook Marketplace. They were bringing it home. They asked me to help because 65-inch TV is too big to actually move across the country without having it broken. They found out that this person had logged, stayed logged into their Twitter, their Netflix, and their Facebook accounts. person locked them out. They're an attorney. They don't want to lose their license for accidental eavesdropping. They logged out. Lesson remains, though, one, well, who the heck is going to use Twitter on a 65-inch TV? It's not going to make the tweets any smarter. I don't need to see it on any screen. <laughs> but make sure if you're leaving the residence, make sure you log out of these uh, Edge applications so that yet another way, another window back into the life that you're trying to rebuild isn't gleaned. Even Netflix, I mean, who actually pays for Netflix? You're probably 
I mean, raise for a live audience, I'd say raise your hand if you're actually paying for Netflix, and most people don't. They're borrowing someone else's account. You don't want the adversary to see you're starting a new life, what you're watching. You don't want to give them any windows for what's going on with you. Be careful when you're posting. If you go to OS, osntframework.com, there's so many apps out there, such as this one, this Python plugin, where you can actually track somebody's sleep patterns based on when they're posting, when they like items, and when they're not. You can get a rough approximation. For the military, that's great if you're going to go capture a bad guy. Okay, they bed down at these nights, at these hours in this general vicinity. We know it's more safe to go after them. Is that correct in your English? I don't know. Is it better to go after them at this time because here's their pattern of being down versus here's when they're active? If you are truly nefarious, you could look and see when the Patriots quarterback is sleeping. Is it Jameis Winston now? And see when they're sleeping. If they've got a solid sleep pattern, maybe bet on the pats. If they're not sleeping, bet on, bet for the opposing team. I would never do that. It just feels a little bit creepy. But the data is out there. The data is there. And there's nothing you can do other than not use Facebook and have that metadata for exploitation out there. We talked about family and friends leaking data. Uh, the Carrie Underwood tweet about, I'm, I'm being careful about where I go and what I say. But my mom might put online that I wore my new sweater and I look great when I go out. Now you've got she's going out with what she's wearing. She's got more of a vector of attack for the adversary to know where she's going and what she's doing. It's a little bit of discipline to get family and friends to not share your personal details. They so have to buy into this as well. I don't want to say you have to cut them out. That's harsh. But you might have to start minimizing your data. Because your personal safety comes first and foremost to other over hurting someone's feelings. A lot of these edge devices, like the uh, ring doorbell, adding somebody to the access control list is as simple as just emailing them a link, and now they can see 1080p quality, high def, who's coming and going from your door. That's illegal for NSA, CIA to monitor U.S. citizens to this level. We would have gone to jail if we <clears throat> had monitored U.S. citizens without their consent like this. But if you take that and forget to log them out, forget to remove their access, just like if they had left the company, combining that with your Amazon Alexa data that retains all of your voice history, if you don't remove the adversary from that shared joint account, they can go in, hear your Alexa details. Alexa, play Freebird. Combined with knowing friends are coming over, you might be having a party. I don't know. But they can start to put together the audio, the video, and put together your new pattern of life. And they've got audio, video into your life with the edge devices you've left behind. I'd recommend definitely changing your password, obviously. Removing them from the account. They can disable your burglar alarm. They can disable your smoke detector. There used to be an episode of CSI Cyber where they were mocking this back in 2012. Uh, how ridiculous that was that a hacker could do this. Well, now it's not a hacker. It's somebody who has joint shared account access to your Amazon account. The other beautiful thing here is you are legally responsible for their charges because unless you explicitly remove them from your account, you have a financial risk. They can run up your credit card bill for device at, uh, for things delivered to them, and you've authorized this until you explicitly remove them. It's not just a physical risk, it's a financial risk. This is all fun, isn't it? My uh, my Google ads are ridiculous after doing all this research. I, ugh, I don't know what Google thinks of me. So the printers, some of the printers, the network printers, you can go back and review the printed files from the print spool. Uh, one of the things I like to do for some of the classes I taught overseas was just go walk in, hit reprint last. Some printers will print the print history, and you can get the metadata of the units and where they're going. Other printers would actually print out, like one in this country, they printed out 500 pages of sensitive documents. I had zero access to their network. I just hit reprint. Make sure, even if you toss the printer in a dumpster, the adversary doesn't have access to it. Remember what you've left behind or what's been left behind, the yin and the yang here. On the Apple machine, you can uh, get a bar. Slides will be available. You can get a bar spool cups. And everything that starts with C, you'll have the metadata for what's been printed with that machine. The ones that start with D can be recovered to the desktop.
that's an actual PDF that you can view. So just doing a simple strings here, strings underscore string space, that file name, and you can see this is just a world market coupon, another 25% off of something else I don't need. But you get the concept. You can see the address, applying for apartment at Cheshire Bridge. That would give the adversary a vector into where you're going. You've got to be careful of what's left behind or what they've done. Email, mail, and social media tracking. I think this is insidious, personally, but I'm a privacy guy working in the intelligence agency. I don't like this. Marketing loves it. Superhuman is an add-on that lets you see when people logged into, read the email you sent them, and the G approximate GPS and IP address before you read it. You can see here the tracking history. Google has added this as well. So you can start to triangulate all of his emails are being opened around Savannah. He's got family in Savannah. He's probably at X location. Now they're tracking you through emails you're sending. Hey, by the way, about the dog, it's here. It's not about the dog. It's pinging your location through the email. Gmail's added this on as well. It's beautiful. Sarcasm, as my daughter would say. Couple that with Docsend for Outlook and some other companies that do this as well. You can put a beacon in the PDF and see how often they've read the beacon. Excuse me, how often they read the PDF where they read the PDF and the GPS before they read it. That's absolutely invasive. So if you have divorce papers coming and you can know they're skipping over the same section, you might know you've won that point you've contested because they keep skipping it. There's a very simple means for this. One, use paper, use ink, print it. They can't track what you printed. Two, go to Terminal and Mac, type in MDLS, metadata list, drag the PDF into the terminal, drop it, hit enter, and you can see the beacon would actually show up where from. If you try this for proof of concept, you can see the difference between a PDF that has a beacon and a PDF that doesn't. Haven't been able to replicate this yet on the Windows machine, still working on it. In the real world, man in the middle, beautiful thing, informed delivery by the U.S. Post Office. Post Office is under a lot of controversy right now. We're not touching that. This is something I thoroughly disagree with. It sounds nice for 90%, but the abuse vector is definitely there. You sign up for informed delivery, they give you either a PDF or JPEG of all the mail coming to your house, which is great, right? Except if you have an abuser who signed up for this before they leave, they know when that tax refund check is coming. They know when court documents are coming because you're still getting drop copies of the PDF that you don't know about. They come by the mailbox, they take the check, they take the papers that have a deadline to them. You don't know because the rest of the world is there. The rest of the mail is there. They have actual packet interception. You have no idea. There's only two ways to mitigate this. Try to sign up for informed delivery by yourself and see if this is rejected. Or go to the post office in person. I realize in the pandemic, some people don't want to go in person. Pick your poison. But you need to make sure that your physical mail isn't being intercepted by the literal man in the middle. Again, this is, has a great intent. It's wonderful, except for, and that's what InfoSec is really about, is the except for, it's not the usual. You got to pick up the pace a little bit here, 21 minutes left. iCal and Google calendars. When you have iCalendars, Google events, and you're sharing that with friends and family, remember to remove them from those access lists as well. For TripIt, if you have, if you send your itinerary to plans at TripIt.com, it sends a drop copy to your boss, your spouse, your children, which is normal, and you forget to remove the spouse, now they've got your flight number, confirmation number, hotel confirmation, they know what seat you're sitting in, how long you're going to be gone, which is operational intelligence that could come break into your house knowing you're gone, that's possible. They could cancel your hotel room, they could cancel your flight. There's a lot that can be done with that. So it's as simple as just, again, scrubbing your access control list. Twitter GPS spoofing, love this because it's dual use. A couple of years ago, I changed my GPS tag. I'm a time traveler. Republic Belarus, Hawaii, Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. So I'm projecting my persona in two minutes. I'm seeing if people are actually watching. I'm like Luke Skywalker on what other ocean planet what was in a Riddle episode eight. I'm projecting my persona out to be in a different place, which could be useful if you're still sitting at home on your sofa, but you want everyone to think you're still in New Orleans, you can change your Twitter GPS tags to project yourself as from New Orleans. Not everything online has to be true. So even if you went to tinfoleak.com 
and downloaded a Twitter report, you would see Republic of Iran, Moscow, Dar es Salaam. If you look at the date timestamps, there's no way I could possibly tweet that far that fast. Plus, I don't think I can get into those countries to begin with. But what is real is down at the bottom, Twitter for iPhone, Twitter for web point. You now know the vector to attack the hack entity if you wanted to. So you're still leaking out some metadata. Also, if you need to open up another account here, uh, I'm at 10 x at engineer.com. Mail.com has about 200 different domains other than Gmail, Hotmail, and iCloud.com that makes it a little bit more professional when you're looking for work and not wanting to use something generic like a Gmail. The Grug on Twitter says, use Signal, use Tor. I say assume your devices are compromised. There's a couple of different uh, consumer tools out there that are meant to monitor your children for your children's safety. Yeah. Not a big fan of that because people are using that to spy on their spouses. I say go back to old school CIA style trade craft. Use personal meetings. Leave your electronics somewhere routine and secure. Meet your friends for lunch. Leave the device at the office in your desk in a safe. Have non or verbal paroles arranged with your family members. You know, if you, I'm a Georgia Tech graduate, I would never wear red because that's our arch rival school colors. If I had a picture of myself on LinkedIn wearing a red shirt, that would mean I'm in danger and somebody would need to come by, check on me, help me leave because I would never wear red. But that's the nonverbal parole that's been set up. You've got the framework, play with it. There's a thousand different iterations of this, but that's something that could be done to signal you need help that wouldn't be intercepted or mean anything to anyone monitoring your keystrokes. iPhone monitoring, this again, I don't want to say pisses me off, but it's not hacking. All this is with FlexiSpy, A provides B's Mac ID and password to MSpy. The target's iPhone is synced to the cloud through Wi-Fi. MSpy downloads an image and parses the data to report for A. That's not hacking, that's just copying someone's phone online with a username and password. Again, the fix for that is to change your password. A couple of different bits of tradecraft. The red screens are more for pay attention. This is useful operational intelligence. Trapping your device. If you put something like sleep cycle on your phone, it measures how well you sleep at night and when you toss and turn. It's going to have that spike at night if someone picks up your phone while you're sleeping. It's natural. You've got a good cover story. I just want to see how I'm sleeping, but you can see if someone's going through your stuff. The other, your iOS has tamper detection built in. You've got a battery, settings battery, then down to battery level and over to the use settings. You can see what devices were open at any given moment slice in time. So you can see at 3 a.m. if someone went through your Twitter, your messages, and your mail, and you are sound asleep, that's going to let you know the canary in the coal mine, somebody's accessing my data while I'm asleep. I'm not crazy. They really are going through my stuff. And this is built into the iOS. Now, this is something that would have cost previously tens of thousands of dollars to the intelligence community, and now it comes with every iPhone issue to help monitor the battery, which you can't replace because they are out of ideas at Apple. Another thing, if you hold Command-R when you reboot, it's recovery mode in Mac. It goes for protected partition. Go to Get Help Online, which is actually... a Beautiful way to do this. Command R, you have a web browser pulling down the keychain, the Wi Fi password, but you have a clean, sterile browser so you can log online to mail.com, send that email to help at safeescape.org, contact them and log on to start to the recovery mode for your life and move on to get away from the abuser. And there's no track left on the hard drive of what you've done. It's a sterile drive because at worst, if you've lost everything else on the Mac, you can reinstall OS X. You can make your machine factory fresh again. All right, I found a device. How simple is it now to have an electronic device in the house? You see here, it's consumer grade. You plug it in, SD card goes in, goes in the power socket. You would have no idea that somebody's actually monitoring. It's illegal, don't do it. Don't recommend that. These devices have limitations. Power storage and collection. If it's continuously broadcasting the Wi-Fi and broadcasting a camera signal out, you're going to need to be connected to something or someone's going to have to come service it, change the battery. 
if it's heavy collection and a lot of storage, it's going to go through power. That's going to take a battery and SD card change. You see how the three components work on each other. And all this, unfortunately, is from Amazon, just simple searches. This is a 1080p Wi-Fi enabled camera, so you can watch the bedroom, the nanny cam, ostensibly. This would connect back to the router. Remember saying, check out the router? If you've now got a brand new clock in your bedroom that's connected to the router, one, unplug it, throw it away, or talk to law enforcement. Monitoring someone in the bedroom is illegal, and that's a charge they can go to jail for. I'm not an attorney. But this would give you the first tip. Unplug it, it goes away, you see what's on the router. A couple of the other devices. I got a beautiful ad for Alexa, show me the living room, which is actually really creepy in this context. That's a uh, 720p uh, Wi-Fi enabled air freshener, so you can watch somebody in the living room. But you still have to monitor the SD card and the battery. The last thing is a 128-hour audio recording device that charges through the USB port. It looks like a USB drive. You put a black light logo on there. It looks like you're just doing forensic imaging practice, but it actually records all the conversations. I may or may not say that certain law enforcement isn't trained to look for USBs on keychains. So if you need to have a recording device on the keychain that's very unobtrusive, that would work as well in 2020. The last thing, this is insidious, is to have the device that goes back and forth between mom's house and dad's house, the partner's houses, that has the camera, has audio video recording, and it's a natural exchange to record, to take that from house to house. So the adversary can remove, change the batteries, pull down the take of the camera, and use that inadvertent or maliciously against the previous spouse. This is fun, isn't it? Sarcasm again, as my daughter would say. The Apple earbuds are meant to be, can be used as a hearing aid. There's an option, you see the ear down there. We've seen where the abuser leaves the phone in the room, the iOS device walks away to another floor and he can, or she can still listen in the room conversations because uh, Bluetooth paired headphones are, excuse me, are still listening. Again, uh, Amazon. This device is about the size of a um, old 2G modem. If you guys remember, if y'all remember those, sorry about that. It would go under the car. It's $25 a month for monitoring to highlight it here, track spouses with the uh, iPhone. And you can see the pattern here of everywhere that beacon's been, except again, I kind of lied to you. That's not the beacon collection. That's from an iPhone image of mine of all the different places I drove around Charlotte and the GPS points collected from my iOS device. So you don't need an old school beacon to follow and see where somebody's been because your smartphones are collecting all that data for you. Same with fitness beacons. If you're worried about being stalked, worried about somebody following you, don't use one. They publish your routes online. Look at the Stratvalik. Just you don't need it. You know if you've run. You know if you've been working out. Get rid of the beacon, toss it just for this. It's going to be okay. You don't need to advertise where you've been. It not being glib, you know, if we're in person, it's trying to be a joke, but just don't use them. All right, well, it's too much. I'm going to order a pizza. Gotta be persistent and thorough because even Domino's records all of your addresses where you've ordered your pizza and your patterns for the past two years. So the adversary could see, oh, she's ordering pizza with the kids on Thursday night. Where is she now? Oh, she's at her mom's. I'm going to drop by. You've got to change all of the passwords. Don't leave anything to chance. Yeah, yeah, but I would skip pizza and go to the gym when we can go to them. Okay, that's great. Planet Fitness also logs everywhere you've been. Every time you badge in to go to the gym, there's a record of it. Make sure you change everything being persistent and thorough. Identity theft, it's binary. It's so simple. If there's identity theft... You have to report it, period. You have to go to identitytheft.gov. There's some great forms. Very quickly, we'll run it on time here. You've got the fraud triangle, a fraud examiner. They teach that there is opportunity, pressure, and rationalization. They, I've supported them all these years. They owe it to me. I'm going to need the extra money when they leave me. I can take this from them. It fits right here. And so often in cases where people split, there's a lot of fraud. Pull your credit report. Don't trust anybody. There's things like spoof card 
It's an app on the Apple Store. It's perfect for social engineering. I could plug in your bank's number. So when I call you from this app on my phone or some of my friend calls me because I have scummy friends, Mrs. Jones, Mr. Jones, this is Bob at SunTrust. I'd like to talk to you about this account. Can you help me with these details? You have the implied trust. It looks like it's from somebody you know. Don't provide any information for any incoming calls. So identitytheft.gov, if you go to the police report, identity theft, they're going to send you here to get a FTC number. Again, it's binary, not to be glib, but if you don't report it, you can't do anything about it. It's going to fill us out again. This is more for the U.S. The EU has different ways to handle this, different countries as well. But for the U.S. audience, you go to identity theft, you plug it in the bank accounts from a clean machine because you're going to actually type in the uh, create a username, password, bank account numbers, what happened. You'll get an FTC identity number. You can use that to start to recover your life with the credit companies and file charges, but you've got to report it. So that covers the C and the I, the A for data availability. CIA used to say, if it ain't in cable traffic, it ain't. Well, if it ain't documented, it ain't. If you don't get it written down, what happened, when it happened, if you don't report it to the authorities, I know that's a little controversial in 2020, but if you don't report it, it doesn't exist. It gives you, again, implied trust that you are okay with what happened. Yes, she beat me, but because I didn't go to the police, well, it's really his word versus his word or his word versus her, whatever. You've got to report it. It's really hard to do, but you've got to do it. Data availability. And this is what we're talking with the active cases for Operation Safe Escape. You've got to document the events and the events. One more time here. You've got to document the events and the incidents with the authorities as they happen. Yes, there was identity theft. Yes, I was hit. Yes, I was threatened with a gun. You've got to have that document. Even if you go in person and document it and have that police report, you've got to do it. As you're documenting these files, well, here's where I saw identity theft in my bank report. Here's where they outlined what was going to happen. Document the files, create an index of them because the volume of data, depending on the relationship, is going to be enormous. Be available for the other person. When they come to you asking for help, shifting roles a little bit, it's not just an IT issue for hey, was this person mailing home confidential data before they resigned? This isn't that type of a case. This is, can you, they're going through a traumatic experience. Be available, go out, well, have a Zoom call with them, whatever we can do now, but be available. It's not going to last forever. They're just going through some hard stuff. Be there for them and just be a good person. That's, this isn't so much a work event. This is someone else's life. They're asking for help. It's a large amount of trust. Data availability. We used to teach this, and I'll bring it here as well. If you have a USB drive, data, photocopies, whatever, have a primary, an alternate, a contingent, and an emergency copy. The primary might go to your parent's safe deposit box. The alternate might go to the attorney. The contingent and emergency copies that you're looking for to glean information, those can be at home, and if you screw one up, you've still got a backup, but have more than one copy of this key data because if it's gone, it's not on corporate Druva backups, you're not going to be able to recover it. The end game is we start to look at the time here. Example of social engineering. When we would terminate a human asset, you know, the relationship's over, they lost access, the nation's priorities moved on, we would say we need to terminate, but it's firm, friendly, final affair. Hey, Jim, you've done a great job providing us information about uh, human trafficking. We've been able to drive this ring to stop it, to protect these individuals. You've, you accomplished what you came to us, what you wanted to do. We've, we've done the goal. We've accomplished it. And as a token of appreciation, here's a bonus. Here's a new laptop. We'll take the old one back. You don't want to deal with that. It's old. Here's a brand new whatever widget. They're happy, the relationship is over, they don't really know why it's terminated, but they're happy they've got money, they've got a new laptop, their ego's boosted, it's over. On the domestic abuse side, yeah, I know, it's a little, ugh. You don't want them to have access to your call data records, so, hey, you know, I've got a discount through work, I've opened my own plan, it started this week, 
I'm not sure what the number is yet, but the bottom line is you're not going to have to pay for my plan. Your cost is going to drop 30, 40, 50, hundred dollars a month. That's money you're going to be able to save because my job is taken care of. So you like a big deal versus I don't want to be on your plan, which is going to trigger a confrontation. Same result. It's all the social engineering, firm, friendly, final and fair. Last couple of points. Yes, I've relied a lot on Star Wars. I have boy, girl, twins. It hits home with me. I saw the first movie in 77 when I was little. R2-D2, strong inscription, strong authentication. Memory was secure throughout the entire, uh, entire series. C-3PO, weak encryption. The device was wiped. His, dev his memory wasn't deleted. It was wiped. If his memory had just been deleted, how long would Star Wars have actually lasted? Maybe 45 minutes for episode four? So deleted versus wiped. Remember those. Unauthorized devices on a network. Uh, can't believe this has been a couple of years already, but ne New Nebula went to old Thanos. He had intrusion detection detected, picked up a rogue device on his network. He did a live memory analysis, and he got a live takeout of her locations, events, chats, and images. So if you have an unauthorized device on your network, that's great. You're able to see there's something that shouldn't be there. Conversely, <clears throat> The adversary can still attack your device if you leave it behind and see what's there, the yin and the yang of the attack here. So in summary, too long didn't read. Change your passwords on a secure machine. Change your locks. Change your garage door code. Change your key fob on your car. Report the events to law enforcement as they happen. That's the hardest thing on here. I don't like asking for help. You've got to ask for help. Document the events as they happen. Report the events. And this isn't your fault. You will get through it. And life will be better once you totally detangle the abuser out of your life. The slides will be available. I'm not sure how we're going to do it here. We've got a thousand ways to share data. I'm at 10 engineercom iOS Forensic on Twitter. And thank you for putting up with a rough start for the talk. Thank you so much for everything you did. Thanks, Will. Thanks very much for giving the uh, talk here. And uh, thank, yeah, thanks for putting up with uh, multiple failures in the presentation. I always on Twitter, and thank you for putting up with a rough start for the talk. Thank you so much for everything you did. Thanks, Will. Thanks very much for giving the uh, talk here. And uh, thank, yeah, thanks for putting up with uh, multiple failures in the presentation. I always on Twitter, and thank you for putting up with a... <laughs> Oh, uh, the, the uh, presentation gods sure do have us. I think we have maybe just time for one question here. There was a question about, uh, will VPN use help with uh, email? I don't know if you can hear me. Oops. Well, it looks like the uh, presentation gods are going to get us. Thanks, everybody, for coming to this. Uh, Will will be online. Uh, you can hit him up uh, for questions in the hop-in link. Uh, and thanks again.